I want to know what is the difference between surrendering to the Guru and to the Antaratman. I have seen the videos, but still I want more clarity into this aspect. For example, is the Atma or the Atma Tattva is same as other Tattva. So in worshipping Guru or Krishna or other gods, isn't it leading to the same thing? And if it is so, then won't surrendering to one lead to other? Why is the difference between surrendering to the Antaratman or surrendering to the Guru? It's, it's something which I need some clarity upon. I, I, I want to know about this. Well, the traditional approach to Guru Vada or the system of Guru Shishya Parampara, the system of Guru and Disciple, bases itself on the idea that a human being, after the socialization process that a human being goes through, finally has to face the master within. So the steps are traditionally in the Indian subcontinent that a child is trained right from the start to be in a state of humility. While the socialization is going on, which is to serve society, there is also the training of the child to bend, to bend in humility. And it starts with bending to the parents and literally actually touching their feet. And you see this a lot still in India and in all parts of Asia. After that training, the parents then show the child the gods. And then the child does that with the gods. And it's quite funny to see that in the churches, it's even with Jesus, that extreme importance given to submission, to surrender, to bending and so on. And once that happens, then the saying goes that the gods then show you the Guru, the Guru in physical form, and then you bend to the Guru and you devote to the Guru and you experience the surrender and humility with the Guru in front of you and then the Guru shows you yourself and by then you are ready actually to face that state of being which is required of you, which is the ultimate humility, the ultimate surrender to the Master within, which then is almost antithetical to what society is demanding from you. So while you're socialized, you're also ready to stand up, to defend yourself when society demands something from you which is not okay for your system. So, in that context, the devotion to the Guru is not meant to be the end. It is the beginning of that final journey to the Self. And it's a training, it's like the training wheels. At one point, you kick off those wheels and you're riding your bicycle on your own. It's not that the Guru is not there for you, but the Guru is not the final destination. That is something which is important to realize as a, as a seeker and it's also for some gurus important to realize that because they may forget that along the way. And sometimes the guru will come and kick off those wheels and, and send a seeker away and create situations and dramas and everything so that they can send the person away because otherwise they're not going to go away. Those are the challenges and also the, the interesting dynamics and, and, and the drama, actually, of the whole Guru Shishya story, you know. Why should a seeker not just treat the Guru as the Antar Guru? Because the Guru is not the Antar Guru. The Guru is in human form, a reflection, a mirror of the Antar Guru. The Guru has failings, there's no single Guru on this planet and has never been, who doesn't have the failings that a human body will actually bring with it. So the Guru is 
your training wheels. And at one point, you have to turn inward and you have to start listening to the truth of your being. The Guru trains you to do that. Which doesn't mean that you don't respect the Guru after you've found the Antar Guru. In fact, the way it goes is that the more a student, a shishya, a disciple is tuning in to the truth within themselves, the more loving and respectful and, and free that they feel with their own Gurus. It's not like a... It's not like a battle and now the Guru is out of the picture. No, it's not like that. But yes, the Antar Guru is the final destination. The real Master within, the, the Soul, the Source, the Truth, that impulse actually, that impulses your whole system, you know, to live in this world, to live in the Truth. Living in the Truth meaning that all actions that result in joyousness in your system, so that you go through this life in a joyous state and not, not suffering. If I may ask, then what about the Tattva, the, the Atma Tattva, which is in, in Guru or Krishna? Is it the same thing firstly? Is it the drop of the main ocean? So then, then what is the difference then? Why? One has to also make attempts not to mix up everything in one big pot. Of course, in each person there is that drop of cosmic truth. And certainly if you are looking at the Guru and you are responding to the Guru's instructions or the Guru's guidance, certainly the Soul which is within the Guru is the same Soul as that which is within you and that which is within everyone else. But you also have a body that is at play here. There's not just a soul, there's a body as well. And your body is very different from the body of your Guru and from the body of everyone else around you. So we're not talking only about soul here, we're talking about the Leela, the play between the soul and the body, the embodied soul. So one embodied being is different from the other embodied being. Certainly if you go and penetrate beyond the materiality of what's going on, you'll find that there is cosmic space in each person because you're made out of matter and the matter is atoms and you go inside those atoms and it is an absolute mirror of the universe outside, which is largely empty or which is largely ether, akash. So you have to be able to distinguish between these various parameters, these various paradigms. When you're on a spiritual path, you're actually on a path of Self-Realization. What that actually means is to be able to distinguish between what is impulsing you in a given moment. Is it the impulse of the Ego, which is a result of your Socialization, or is it the impulse of the Truth, which is that essence within you which guides the system towards joyousness, towards increasing joyousness, which is increasing Self-Realization. So, you can't mix up everything and put it in one big pot and have it for dinner, because if you do that, it's also a way of escaping, taking responsibility for relating to the Source within the body that you are. It's like saying, no, I think I'll just focus on the Guru and then everything will be okay. And what the Gurus do, they get so frustrated because <laughs> they know that everything will not be okay if the student doesn't take things in their hand, so then they just say, okay, sab theek ho jayega, bete, sab theek ho jayega, everything will be okay. Sab theek nahi hota hai. Unless you are responsible for your own Self-Realization, sab theek nahi hota hai. Everything is not okay. So, 
I think what you're what you're trying to do somewhere is to put the responsibility onto the spiritual master and say, okay, that's where my story ends. Now I'll stay in devotion to the spiritual master lifelong, and everything will be fine. That is nice. It's a good thing. It's a it's not a negative thing, but it's not the end of the road. It's not. It isn't. 